I'll try to change my voice so that you can tell, so that you can distinguish the three characters. Just to let you know, there is um, Cliff, uh, who is um, in his late 20s, early 30s, Abby, who is elderly, and Cherry, who is a woman in her 30s, early 40s. And I'll kind of indicate when I've changed voices, but you should be able to tell. <coughs> So Cliff starts. Birdie Bush Road, Hereford Retreat, Nut Street, Gaylor Close, Sumner Road, Daniel Gardens, Canary Close, Jarrah Street, Samuel Street, Pentridge Street, Sumner Close, Finch Mews, Bamber Road, Moody Road, Crane Street, Diamond Street, Carysbrook Gardens, Boathouse Walk. She's um, sports direct, JD Sports. Wafarin, Dijuxin, Bizapralal, Donepizil. Angel wants the Jordan Air 4 retros, but I say the Converse All Stars are more suitable for school. He won't have it, pouts his disappointment at me. Says I want him to look like a fool. So funny, so sweet. But I can't afford the Jordan Air Fours, so I buy the Converses, and that's the end of it. He gives me the silent treatment all the way from Rye Lane to Hanover Park. When I tell Lola I am 362 years old, she can't stop giggling. I'm like that fella on the TV, that doctor whose face regenerates each decade. Abby, you're too much. She tells me to stop or she'll split her sides laughing. Across roads, gardens, closes and squares, scope reality and the names of streets, embed them in my mind. I map a walk, then when I'm at my desk, pin it down with logograms and contour lines. I retrace my steps, embellish the maps with flourishes of my own. Carrot symbols mark the vomit on Pentridge Road. A rose marks the shrine to a hit and run on Rye Lane. My mind, oh my mind, exploit, explodes with images of green and pleasant lands. I long for open pastures. Concrete kills me. I'm made of softer climes, the blue spume of the ocean, particles of sugar and sand. The communal lounge of the Hanover Park Gearhorn is like a waiting room processing centre for people who are refugees from their old lives. A place of limbo where internally displaced persons hover between life and death. The highlight of the day is the rattle of Lola's drugs trolley. Sometimes I think it's worse than that filthy hole with its stench of vomit and shit when we were tortured by the sound of the angry boiling sea and the thump, thump, thump of shark's tails against the stern as they followed us, hungry for a body jumped or thrown overboard. Cheers up when I say we're having McDonald's though. In the noisy pub, a sea of faces, pink, purple, grey. The conversation zip around me. I am invisible. The warm beer leaves a slimy afterthought. I'm the only one who knows that this pub sits on a ley line. I hold the secret to me and remember what the nurse said. Shattered is what she said. You are shattered. When she says it, I see fag fragments of glass held together for a moment and blast apart in a shower of glistening powder. Between the old life and this one is a gap, like the hole where a tooth should be. My tongue explores it, searching for meaning. Then I'm out on the street again, memorising roots. I look for signs of myself in the street names. King Henry Walk, Miles Chase, Black Boy Lane. We're both hungry and tired. We decide to be kind to each other again. We're not far from the restaurant when all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, four, maybe five policemen appear. When we hear the commotion, even Lola goes to the window to see what's going on. A young man surrounded by police. It happens every day in London, but it's not the sort of thing you want your kid to see. Four policemen and their prancing dog all over some poor bloke. I should walk away, but I can't. I have to keep watching. I have to bear witness. Plock at his shirt, his trousers, 
turn him around, pluck at his pockets, squeeze his cheeks to look inside his mouth. I recall how they jabbed and prodded us, counted our teeth to determine how healthy we were before putting us on the block. One of my mates says when they swoop like that is to intimidate the rest of us, keep us under control. I ain't done nothing. I'm an innocent maker of maps. Ask anybody around here, they'll tell you. They've all seen me out and about taking notes of the street names. My maps show what the other maps don't tell you. My map marks Mrs. Lee's kindness on the corner of Gaynor Close, kids' laughter on Sumner Road, the smell of fre fresh cut grass on Peckham Rye. I can't hear what they're saying through the window, but I can tell from the officer's open mouth, his furious frown, that they are arguing a man to keep a safe distance. That's when I recognize his face. He is unblemished by time, but I recognize his ancient fury anywhere. Lola thinks there was a problem with my memory, but I swear I remember him as if it was yesterday. The officers stand off as, they're confront as though they're confronted with an angry lion. The man makes them angry and afraid. I will him to do what they tell him to. Don't answer back. Don't make things worse for yourself. He refuses to answer their questions. Birdie Bush Road, Hereford Retreat, Nuff Street, Gaynor Close, Sumner Road, Daniel Garden, Samuel Street, Finch Mews, Sum Sumner Road, Diamond Close, Birding Bush Road, Diamond Close, Cinnamon Close, Cinnamon Close, Cinnamon Close, Cinnamon Close. The officer takes out his taser, aims it at the man and shoots. Wires whip around his legs. He crumples to the ground. Is he dead, Mummy? Mummy, is he dead? This is no place for my boy. I snatch him up and leave. I don't want him to see this. We don't take the bus. I want to walk. We walk past Burling Bush Road, Hereford Retreat, Nut Street, Finch News, Diamond Close. We walk until I don't know where I am anymore. Me, born and bred here. Me, who knows Peckham like the back of my hand. Lost. After 300 years, of enduring one indignity after another, I have had enough. As I watch the paralyzed boy fierce down on the ground, I know what I have to do. I have nothing to lose. Lola tries to stop me as I make my way to the reception area, but I am filled with a new energy and she is too heavy-footed to outrun me. In a moment, I am out in the open, face to face with the officer. Centuries have wanted to see you again. You and that dog of yours have crossed oceans, deserts, chased me across space and time. Why can't you just let me be? Let the young man go. He has done nothing wrong. The officer's eyes flash with recognition, but he is at pains to pretend that he doesn't know who I am. He ignores me and speaks into his radio. My chest swells with 300 years of anger. I snatch the taser and hold it against his head. Do you know how many times I've dreamed of this? Imagine taking your whip out of your hand and letting you have a taste of it. His colleagues stand back. This is not their fight. His forehead is slippery with sweat. He puts his hands up and backs away from me, but I am too quick for him. I aim and fire. Ka-chow! The wires shoot straight into his head. As he hits the ground, his big purple tongue rolls out of his mouth. Something snaps in me. For God's sake, shut up with your whining. Blame me for everything. I'm sorry I brought you into an imperfect world. Sometimes I wish I'd never given birth to you at all. I'm glad you saw what you did this afternoon. That's right, I'm glad. You're a big boy now. It's time you learned what's in store for you. And he's sobbing with a new unwanted wisdom. He's crying like he'll never stop. <laughs> I scoop him into my arms. I fold him into me, my love a force field around him. I hold on to him tight, 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 my precious, my beautiful black boy. I hug him until we both return to ourselves. But of course all I do is watch helplessly through the window as the officer cuffs the young man's hands behind his back and the paramedics load him into the ambulance. Lola says, that's enough excitement for the day, and gives me a cup of water to wash down the tablets. I 
I love the night time when my boy sleeps, when he draws even breaths and his face settles into its serene beauty. Then I'm free to roam. Two clicks of a mouse and I'm talking to a faceless wonder in another world. Not tonight. Tonight I search for, an, for another excitement. I find it soon enough. What we saw recorded on a smartphone behind neck curtains. It don't look the way I remember it. The colours less sharply defined, the emotions fuzzy. Freeze the frame, zoom in on my angel. His hand in mine, his mouth stretched across his teeth. His cheeks bunched up and distorted, making him look like an octogenarian. Twenty years between him and the young man, yet the puzzlement and fear on their faces make them indistinguishable. When I hear movement in his room, I go to find him propped against pillows, holding a pencil, his face creased in concentration as he scratches at a piece of paper. What are you doing? Why aren't you asleep? I made you a map, Mum. He's drawn our route in meticulous detail. At the location of the scene, he's drawn where the man fell, the placement of the police, but he's rubbed them out again. All that's left of them are faint lines and eraser fluff, the rest of our route that day intact. He gives me the map and says, now you'll never be lost again. The electricity, when it shoots through me, illuminates neural pathways. I shine so bright they don't dare touch me. They let me go. I'm Frankenstein's monster with heightened senses. I smell and taste the sweetness of cinnamon close. The rocks on the buildings glisten on diamond close. Blake's angels sing in the trees on Birding Bush Road. The pavement cracks and it's, it's riven in two, fills with an expanse of water on about Boathouse Walk. My mind takes an aerial view. The map lights a path. I make my way home. Burden Bush Road, Hereford Retreat, Nut Street, Gainer Close, Sumner Road, Daniel Gardens, Canary Close, Jarrett Street, Samuel Street, Pentry Street, Cinnamon Close, Finch Mews, Bamber Road, Moody Road, Crane Street, Diamond Street, Carisbrook Gardens, Boathouse Walk, Black Boy Lane. Thank you very much.